in this video we will study about the histology of the spleen when you see the general features of the spleen the spleen is the largest lymphoid organ of the body normally it is a blood forming organ in the fetal life and the blood destroying organ in the postnatal life so it is called as the graveyard of rbcs since it is in the blood stream it filters the blood from the blood borne antigen and microorganisms next we'll see the connective tissue framework except at the hilum the surface of the spleen is covered by a layer of peritoneum which is referred as serous coat deep to the serous layer the organ is covered completely by a capsule the trabeculae arising from the capsule extend into the substance of the spleen and as they do the trabeculae divide into smaller divisions to form networks the capsule and the trabeculae are made up of fibrous tissue in which the elastic fibers are abundant in some animals they contain much smooth muscle but this is not a prominent feature of human spleen the spaces are between the trabeculae are pervaded by a network of reticular fibers embedded in an amorphous matrix the fibroblast which are called as the reticular cells and the macrophages are also present in relation to the reticulum the interstices of the reticulum are pervaded by the lymphocytes blood vessels blood cells and by macrophages next we'll see about the parenchyma on examination with unaided eye the interior of the spleen shows round white areas this is known as white pulp surrounded by the red matrix which is known as the red pulp next we'll st study about the white pulp so this area is called as the white pulp the white pulp is made up of aggregation of lymphocytes that surround a small artery or arterioles as a result it is in the form of cord like aggregation of the lymphocyte that follow the branching pattern of the arterioles the cord appears to be circular in cross section at places the cords are thicker than elsewhere and contain the lymphatic nodules similar to those seen in the lymph node so these nodules are called as the malphigian bodies each nodule has a germinal center then has a surrounding cuff of densely packed lymphocytes the nodules are easily distinguished from those of the lymph node because of the presence of an arteriole in each of them the arteriole is placed eccentrically at the margin of the germinal center more than one arteriole may be present in relation to one germinal center the functional significance of the white matter is similar to those of the cortical tissue of the lymph node the lymphatic nodules of the white pulp or aggregation of the b lymphocytes the germinal centers or areas where b lymphocytes are dividing the lymphocytes surrounding the arteriole are referred as the periarterial lymphatic sheath p a l s peri arterial lymphatic sheath the lymphocytes of peri arterial lymphatic sheath are chiefly the t lymphocytes this is an another image to show the white pulp so this center is the germinal center which is a light staining one where the lymphocytes are dividing and here you can see this is the peripheral zone or the mantle zone here you can see the central arteriole which is present eccentrically in the white pulp so surrounding the central arteriole you have the peri arterial lymphatic sheath uh, which is made up of the t lymphocytes next we'll see about the red pulp so these areas are the red pulp the red pulp is a modified lymphoid tissue 
infiltrated with all the cells of circulating blood it is like a sponge permeated by the space the spaces are called as the splenic sinusoids which are lined by the reticular cells the interval between the spaces are filled by the b lymphocytes as well as t lymphocytes macrophages and the blood cells these cells appear to be arranged as cords which are called as the splenic cords of billroth the cords form a network this is an another image to show the red pulp alone so here you can see the splenic cords and these spaces are the splenic sinuses the splenic cords are known as the cords of billroth and it is made up of t lymphocytes b lymphocytes macrophages and all the blood cells so these cords form a network so in this image you can see this is the white pulp so in the white pulp eccentrically placed you have the central arteriole and surrounding the white pulp you have the red pulp so when you see the zone of the red pulp immediately surrounding the white pulp is called as the marginal zone this zone has a rich network of sinusoids numerous antigen presenting cells are found close to the sinusoids this region seems to be specialized for bringing antigen confined to the circulating blood example some bacteria into contact with the lymphocytes in the spleen so that an appropriate immune response can be started against the antigen such contact does not takes place in the lymph node the antigen reach the lymph node from the tissue through the lymph surgical uh, removal of the spleen that is the splenectomy reduces the ability of the body to deal with the blood borne infections next we'll see the circulation through the spleen on reaching the hilum of the spleen the splenic artery divides into five branches that enter the organ independently each branch divides and subdivides as it travels through the trabecular network the arterioles arising from this network leave the trabeculae to pass into the intertrabecular spaces for some distance each arteriole is surrounded by a dense sheath of lymphocytes these lymphocytes they constitute the white pulp of the spleen the arteriole then divides into number of straight vessels that are called as the penicillary vessels the penicillary arterioles either they open into the red pulp that is called as the open circulation or they open into the splenic sinusoids that is called as the closed circulation the veins from the splenic sinusoids and the red pulp they end in the trabecular veins this is a picture of higher magnification of the red pulp so here you can see the spaces so these spaces are called as the splenic sinuses so this is lined by the endothelium the endothelium of the sinusoids of the spleen or modified endothelium the endothelium here are elongated and they are shaped like bananas and these cells are referred to as stave cells s t a v e stave cells so with the with the electron microscope a system of ultra microscopic fibrils are present in their cytoplasm the fibrils may help to alter the shape of the endothelial cells thus opening and closing the gaps between the adjoining cells the spleen act as a filter for own out red blood cells normal erythrocyte they can change the shape and pass easily through the narrow spaces which is present in the penicillin and ellipsoid however the cells that are aged are unable to change the shape and they are trapped in the spleen where they are destroyed by the macrophages so here you can see the cell which is present in the transit 
when you see the lymph vessels of the spleen traditionally it has been held that the spleen lymph vessels are confined to the capsule and the trabeculae recent studies have shown however that they are present in all parts of the spleen the lymphocytes produced in the spleen reach the blood stream mainly through the lymph vessels next we'll see the functions of the spleen like other lymphoid tissue the spleen is a center where b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes multiply and play an important role in immune responses as stated above the spleen is the only site where an immune response can be started against antigen which is present in the circulating blood the tissue contains the larger aggregation of macrophages of the mononuclear phagocyte system in the spleen the main function of these cells is the destruction of the red blood corpuscles that have completed their useful life this is facilitated by the intimate contact of the blood with the macrophages because of the presence of an open circulation the macrophages also destroy one of leukocytes and the bacteria in the fetal life the spleen is a center for the production of all blood cells and in later life only lymphocytes are produced here the spleen is often regarded as a store of blood that can be thrown into circulation when required so this function is much less important in man than in some other species when you see the clinical correlation the splenomegaly that is the enlargement of the spleen is termed as splenomegaly it occurs in a wide variety of disorder which increases the cellularity and vascularity of the organ and many of the causes are exaggerated form of normal splenic functions the causes of splenomegaly are the infections such as malaria and leishmaniasis and disorders of immunoregulations which include rheumatoid arthritis and sle and altered splenic blood flow in case of cirrhosis of liver portal vein obstruction and splenic vein obstruction and lymphohematogenous malignancies which include the hodgkin disease and non hodgkin's lymphoma and diseases with abnormal erythrocytes such as thalassemia spirocytosis sickle cell anemia and storage diseases like gaucher's disease neiman picks disease and miscellaneous causes which includes the amyloidosis the primary and metastatic splenic tumors in the next video we'll study about the histology of the thymus tonsil and the mucosa associated lymphoid tissue